the people's platform hello there a very good evening and welcome to another edition of the people's platform joining us this evening on the people's platform is professor ashani tilakaratna she is the chair for the committee on popularization of science at the sri lanka association for the advancement of science a very good evening professor tilakaratna and welcome to the show good evening shalin thank uh, you professor tilakaratna now when we speak about the advancement of science research and development the field of science it it's of course got a lot of potential but here in sri lanka when you speak about you know popularizing the subject of science uh, mainly among school children am i right to presume yes, that yes yes so when we speak about popularizing science among school children in sri lanka to kind of push them to take up science more be more curious you know try and create some world renowned scientists here in sri lanka one of the main requirements for science is uh, practical experiments you can't it's it's much like swimming you know you can't read books about swimming and and become a michael phelps in the future you need to get down into the water do it try it see it feel it but um, professor you are entrusted with this um, well sisyphian task if you will uh, to try and promote science in a country that has somewhere between 10 to 15000 schools i might be off on the number a bit uh, but at the end of the day a good 90% of those schools do not even have access to a science laboratory even some of the most popular top class schools in in colombo even um, don't really have uh, proper access mm. to scientific laboratory so i'd like to begin our discussion on well the advancement of science and 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 your role of course as uh, the chair of the committee to popularize science in sri lanka how do you do this how do you get about this massive hurdle that is the lack of infrastructure the lack of opportunities for students to really understand science mm. yes shailen that's a great question great place to start with so uh, yes there's a problem that science is always uh, with hands on hmm. right so hmm. that's like a must if you do science you have to do lab work hmm. because science is mainly based on observations hmm. right so you get the training to observe things so it can be in the physical world in the social world or in the natural world hmm. there are a lot of phenomena that you can observe and be curious about hmm. them and then maybe take notes and follow the uh, the uh, phenomena hmm. and think logically about hmm. them collect information hmm. you know think scientifically uh, make records hmm. of your observations and then analyze them again hmm. and come into conclusions hmm. so basically the scientific method so hmm. i explain a few parts in the few components of the scientific hmm. method now to do that yes practicals are a must it's a must if you are a science graduate if you are a science student you have to have hands on experience hmm. but not only inside the lab hmm. right so these skill sets that's hmm. what we want to you know empower the students with the skills hmm. so you don't have to go into a lab and do an experiment all the time hmm. there are many activities that you can do maybe in your home hmm. right in your classroom Hmm. So now actually we are going towards that even in the schools. Hmm. Uh, I I know the uh, organizations like the Ministry of Education and hmm. National Institute of Education hmm. even uh, Sri Lanka Association for the Advancement of Science. So we try to find alternative methods because hmm. we can't ask for the facilities that we don't have. There are hmm. certain facilities that you can't get in Sri Lanka hmm. right due to the various economical issues and those hmm. things. So you can't wait until the government comes and gives you all the facilities to mm. all the schools so we have to find alternatives mm. so and we have to popularize science also mm. right so we can do in in like miniature scale, scale. Mm. we can do the same sets of experiments sometimes mm. you need only a small amounts of material mm. and not very sophisticated instruments mm. right so that's what we are looking at mm. and mainly the committee for popularization of science we want the students to you know develop those skills mm. of the scientific thinking and scientific method mm. so for example can i take an example of an activity definitely that we do? so we have this very popular program called nature diaries okay right which has been running uh, since i think uh, late 70s mm. uh, a very popular program among the school children and uh, school teachers mm. so the task given to the students is they have to find and observe a natural phenomenon mm. for example let's say okay 
a very simple thing might be uh, the development of a butterfly from the early stages so he follows the metamorphosis. stage yes okay. metamorphosis right so that can be an interesting phenomenon for a school uh, small kid hmm. so he follows every step of it hmm. every day maybe every hour i don't know and then he keeps a log hmm. a diary that's hmm. why we call it nature diaries hmm. so they find a natural phenomenon observe it hmm. make records think about it analyze it and forms a diary hmm. right and we evaluate the diaries we hmm. get very nice diaries actually hmm. right so that is one program so indirectly uh, we uh, try to, uh, to through this program not only to uh, make them interested in science not only to uh, give the skill set that they will need later as a scientist hmm. but also uh, we want to improve their love for the environment care for other living beings hmm. right so they will naturally start thinking along a different line so they hmm. will be trained automatically hmm. so that uh, we hope that they will continue to do that hmm. that observation and reading about it hmm. and you know be uh, more caring about the environment and whatever around them right so that's the basic idea so you don't have to go to a lab to do that hmm. right but if you actually go to the ad advanced level uh, science hmm. you have to of course have hands on experience hmm. but to get it started hmm. right i i want to tell that you can give the same set of skills hmm. even without going into a lab hmm. because you raised that question of not having the Facilities. proper facilities yes. so so if i if i speak a bit about um the committee that you chair the committee yes. to uh, popularize science here yes. in sri lanka uh, what's the length and breadth of your mandate like do you only focus on school students when does it start when does it end if you could give us a little bit of details on that yes right so uh, i'm chairing the uh, committee only for this year for okay. 2024 so for next year there will be another chairperson okay. and uh, our main uh, prime focus is the school students okay. right so empower them with those skills mm. and uh, uh, natural interest towards science mm. hoping that they will go into studying more on science mm. and go to a future career in science okay. even if not even if they go uh, to a separate field mm. those logical analytical scientific thinking that they mm. learn mm. by learning science they will carry that to their because science is all around us right mm. in everyday life it's shaping you can't really lives. escape science you can't really escape science <laughs> you have you have to know it you have because all around you is science hmm. like it can be uh, it can be just talking about climate change or it can be uh, like when you go to grocery grocery store whether to buy a plastic cup or a paper cup right hmm. so that is science uh, so that's why our, because our future is our kids so we want to assuming that they will create a better future hmm. right uh that is why our prime focus is uh, the school children but mm. not only them mm. we uh, have different programs for other students like university students mm. graduate students undergraduate students and also general public mm. right we reach the general public through various programs like mm. we uh, create uh, youtube shorts mm. short videos under 1 minute mm. with a small scientific concept mm. which is relevant to everyday life hmm. maybe it's about use of plastic or e-waste management hmm. microplastic pollution whatever hmm. short clip so that we can reach to the general public not hmm. only the students and uh, then uh, we have introduced a new program uh, a podcast series okay. now a podcast is a kind of a talk show radio hmm. show but we have the youtube uh, media hmm. uh, the youtube channel on slas so uh, we actually have a video cast hmm. so we bring the eminent scientists in the hmm. country hmm. and uh, talk a little bit about how they came into science why why they are studying in that particular area what research hmm. are they doing uh, at the same time talk some science about their research field so that the students mainly they will uh, get inspired by hmm. seeing how they came into science what they are studying and what what future uh, like career paths that will that will be open to them if they follow the, in the same area hmm. right uh, and at the same time we want to educate the general public also through hmm. those things so yes. since you mainly spoke about um, students and, yes. and school students is this only limited to government schools or is it open to schools across the country how is that uh, it is open to any any school uh, across the country on invitation we can go to any place hmm. right so a uh, lot of times it's on invitation hmm. that we go hmm. now for example uh, on the 20th of march we went to kendi okay uh, in pallekeli we had our first 
school science day mm. program which is a signature program of the committee mm. uh, every year but due to covid we couldn't do this uh, for as a much, few years uh, yes mm. for a few years last year we started with one mm. this year we are hoping to do at least four or five mm. so uh, that was uh, on invitation uh, it was uh, held in uh, the slit candy uni in mm. palakali so uh, uh, upon their invitation and uh, with the help of the candy education zone Mm -hmm. uh, we conducted that program. So likewise, we have invitations from a school in Polon Narua mm -hmm. and uh, uh, Batikalo and Beliholduya. Actually, we have two regional chapters of SLA, so they have requested two programs. Mm -hmm. uh, so we actually gather a lot of uh, uh, students from uh, uh, several schools. We mm -hmm. are not just doing it for one school. In the region, we gather uh, students from several schools into a central location. Mm -hmm. And uh, design our Science Day program uh, according to their need, mm. right? So if if they want to like have a program on nutrition, mm. we have a program special program on that. Okay. If they want us to talk about pollution, mm. we uh, focus our program accordingly. So mm. likewise, so mainly to uh, educate the kids about various current topics, mm. uh, so that they will get into reading more about them, mm. and also making awareness of mm. current issues so that that's what we focus our science programs on and mm. we have a little fun with the kids also they have a quiz competition so that they mm. get engaged uh, in the program otherwise it will be just passive listening uh, to our mm. lectures so they actually enjoy it a lot so yes. and, and these programs organized by the committee to popularize science across Sri Lanka how long have they been going on for uh, well I don't have actually the actual day Starting that it date. was started so mm. but for a long time it was a very popular program uh, the committee was uh, like going all around the country in the pre-covid time mm. and uh, they were actually sponsored by several uh, external parties mm. uh, but all of that uh, came to an end with the covid and the recession and everything mm. so we have to now restart we are reviving actually mm. in this year yes. so Based on what you said, it seems as if the mandate of the committee to popularize science takes a multi-pronged approach, not just you know, focused on creating scientists in Sri Lanka alone, but to create citizens who love the environment, yes. who have analytical thinking, and hopefully would help them in even another uh, discipline that they plan to follow in uh, their future. However, I, I believe uh, that creating scientists in Sri Lanka is all, must be uh, one of the main goals of uh, the committee to popularize science uh, or one of the ultimate goals yes. of the committee uh, is to create more scientists in Sri Lanka so that we can engage in more research development and of course at the end of the day keep up with the world. Uh, now getting opportunities for Sri Lankans to really perfect their art or to practice what they want to do in the future is an important aspect and we'll continue our discussion on that line after a short commercial break don't go anywhere you're watching the people's platform <laughs> People's Platform. TV One. TV for Life. Tear gas and water cannons unleashed on university students in two separate locations. Sirisena says no court testimony necessary. CID statement already given. Will both presidential and general elections be held on the same day? Ready for a debate with Anura, says Sajit. Sri Lanka climbed in World Test Championship standings following series win against Bangladesh. platform.
Welcome back. You're tuned in to the People's Platform. We're continuing our discussion with uh, Professor Ashani Tilakaratne uh, regarding uh, popularizing science in Sri Lanka. Of course, uh, as we discussed before, uh, one of the ultimate goals is to create good scientists here in Sri Lanka because, of course, uh, we need scientists to progress with the world, to keep up with the world, and to take Sri Lanka uh, that extra mile ahead. Um, is there any program done by the committee to um, popularize science in Sri Lanka uh, to really connect up-and-coming scientists, up-and-coming students even, if you identify a student with some sort of potential in a school that you visit during your many programs that you conduct across the island, is there any way that uh, you'll make an attempt to maybe connect them with some mentor, uh, to check up on them every now and again and see that they are given that extra support that they need to make them great scientists. Yes, Shalin. Uh, there's no one program like that. Mm. But when we visit to schools, especially through our school science day programs and nature diaries program, uh, we get to engage with the students. We connect with them, right? Mm. So they, they are free to come and talk to us. We, ma we make them comfortable to come mm. and talk to us. So they, there are occasions that they come and, uh, you know, express their ideas, express their future ambitions mm. and talk to us to get advice. So. We are always contactable. They can always reach us through SLAS, mm. right? We give them our contact information when we go to schools. And uh, especially because you uh, asked about that mentoring part, now the Nature Diaries program, through that we train the teachers also. Mm. They are also with us and we have several other teacher training programs so that we empower them to, you know, guide the students. So through them, they can always connect to us. And uh, when we go for evaluations of these uh, uh, competitions and programs, right, so we see the potential skills and potential abilities of the students mm. so that we can, you know, get them to build up on that. And uh, we are always there for them. They can always connect with SLAS. Uh, SLAS is a premier scientific organization with mm. thousands and thousands of uh, professional members hmm. in various disciplines, all the disciplines of science from medical to agriculture to life sciences, physical, chemical, social sciences, computer, everything. There are se different sections for each discipline. Hmm. Hmm. So those sections also conduct various other programs for hmm. students, teachers and community. Hmm. So they, they can always reach us. We are reachable. So we are there if they want help. Hmm. They can be connected to the correct person if they want to, you know, go along a particular pathway hmm. to find their career or higher uh, education or if any advice they need, yes, they can contact us. At the end of the day, everybody, you know, studies some sort of discipline um, in order to make a living. There are, of course, those who do it out of passion, but uh, those people are few and far from many. Hmm. Uh, so. When it comes to the general perception about uh, the subject of science and the avenues that are available, at least for a student who is going through uh, the usual school system here in Sri Lanka following the local academic programs, it's you choose uh, the subject of science at your advanced level examination after having, uh, you know, sitting for an examination, the ordinary level examination across all disciplines and you select science, uh, then you enter university and uh, the usual perception is, you know, if I do science, I either become a doctor or an engineer and that's it. Uh, but we know that's very far from the truth and that there are so many different disciplines nowadays. Do you think that uh, there is enough being done to really educate the students in Sri Lanka about what they can really do because there may be many students in Sri Lanka who are uh, who have the potential to be amazing in different disciplines of science but they, their, their talent their potential is just lost simply due to the lack of information because they don't know that something like this really yeah. exists yeah yeah that's a very good question Shalom because that's a real problem right so we have noticed that the students don't know enough mm. about it teachers don't know enough about it parents don't know enough mm. about it I didn't know as a student when I mm. did my uh, A-levels, I knew only, being, because I did biology, I, mm. I knew only that I can be a doctor and that's the end of my life mm. if I can't be a doctor, mm. right? Uh, so that is another intention of these programs when we go for school science day programs, mm. we have a separate uh, session, a lecture on the opportunities, the avenues that are open for a science uh, 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 student mm. or a science degree holder. Mm. What are the challenges they face and mm. what are the opportunities open 
within the country and also away right mm. in the foreign countries so we we need there's a lack of awareness of that so mm. it's not only uh, the medical doctor and the engineer there mm. are a lot of other areas okay you can i can name a few uh, pharmaceuticals cosmetics mineralogy mm. right uh, agriculture forestry uh, life sciences and uh, even quality assurance Hmm. right uh, it can be like uh, when i say pharmaceuticals it can be from production to quality assurance to uh, it can be uh, making uh, developing packaging materials right so food science hmm. sports science sports hmm. medicine right so there are a lot of like uh, sub disciplines hmm. and even if you take medical sciences it's not only been a doctor Hmm. right so there there are a lot of other avenues that a science graduate can take within this country hmm. because a science graduate is like very well needed in the country right hmm. and uh, usually uh, they get paid well hmm. right and uh, even in other countries they can go and find their jobs they can basically decide which country they want to live in because hmm. there are many opportunities available only thing is our general public uh, general community is not aware of the opportunities available for mm. a science graduate mm. they think if you can't be a doctor maybe you can be a science teacher and that's it mm. I, i'm not you know undermining these mm. uh, jobs but there are various other opportunities available according to the skills different students have developed and according mm. to their interest they might not want to work in a lab mm. they might just want to go go to the field and do the work mm. right so yeah it's like that so if you like uh, if you have that uh, proper skill set of hmm. scientific and analytical thinking if you follow the scientific method hmm. if you have those good observational skills if you hmm. have the analytical and logical thinking if you can you know make uh, sensible decisions about what's happening around you hmm. so there you have a scientist right so one of my final questions to you cuz we're in the final few minutes of the show is maybe a little bit out of the mandate of your committee but um there have been many aspersions cast on on the viability of the sri lankan education system how we teach our students because we have been following this education system mm. if you will since free education was introduced to sri lanka uh, by cww kanangara we've had very very small changes in syllabus uh, a twerk here uh, you know maybe a small change over there but nothing substantial mm. nothing that would really um, satisfy the need for sri lanka to keep up mm. with the rest of the world so particularly speaking about the subject of science since that is of course your field of expertise how can this system or the standard system of education that is currently in place in sri lanka right now be you know made more efficient for people or for, for children especially who show potential in science because at the end of the day you get children maybe who are brilliant in science but who are really bad in say for example their first language mm-hmm. uh, or a subject like history but uh, going through the education system until the age of 16 uh, they will score badly on those subjects and they will be led to believe that they don't really uh, they they aren't really capable they aren't really smart they aren't intelligent and and you know kill uh, mm-hmm. their motivation their you know happiness to engage in even this subject of science so any suggestions on how that can be fixed and, and is the committee on on well, popularizing yes. science looking into this yes yes the committee and also slash uh, the association as a whole with the other sections mm. that i mentioned we are like into it we have done several educate the teachers because they are the ones who are delivering the mm. uh, subject content to the students mm. so we don't have a problem with the content i think uh, our science content is great Uh, mm. in sri lanka so we we can send the students to anywhere in the world and they will do fantastic because we we cover all the basic concepts in science in the mm. content but it's how you deliver it to the students so we have to uh, like it, it's not like rote learning it shouldn't be just mem- memorizing mm. right mm. so they have to we have to create that curiosity in their mind through our teaching so it should be something like an inquiry based kind of teaching mm. so in the teacher workshops that we conduct in mm. the fr- from the committee for the popularization of science and other committees we try to inculcate that uh, habit of inquiring mm. you know within the teachers because teacher has to be trained first so that mm. he or she can deliver it properly to the student mm. because it's something that uh, 
you have to have as a training and until that becomes your practice mm. right it takes some time so through inquiry based learning we can avoid that memorization part mm. but at the same time we cover the content through mm. a very interesting uh, and instead of getting them to memorize manner. you get them to understand it to understand it maybe by observing something maybe by doing a practical mm. right mm. a hands on activity so mm. those are the things that we have to but it takes time you you can't do it overnight Hmm. you have to take some time and uh, get them to digest that method into their head and practice it practice hmm. it practice it and and then it will be a habit of teaching and learning hmm. yeah uh, but uh, i mean I, i remember even during the time that i was in school it was always you know this memorizing exams memorizing exams <laughs> memorizing exams and um, sometimes the moment you write your exam you just delete everything that you memorized <laughs> yes. because you have to memorize for the Next subject that exam. comes yes. afterwards and yes. you don't really have space yes. Yes. in your head so is is that uh, procedure according to in in you know in the various methods that are you know available to teach science is that one of uh, the more viable methods or is that just an age old method that we sri lankans are finding it very hard to give up um there are in science there are certain things that you have to you know remember mm. right uh, uh, certain basic things mm. that will you know carry on mm. the entire learning process uh, but the other concept most of the science concepts uh, they are based on logical thinking Mm. so you don't really have to memorize the things and uh, uh, keep it in your hand head until the exam and then delete it to uh, for the other set mm. so that is why it's very important to find the correct way of teaching it mm. you know so that uh, through the through the uh, inquiry based teaching mm. or problem based teaching you don't feel like you are memorizing things and mm. through the activities it goes into your head mm. because it's like when you read and uh, try to remember Mm. there's a limit right okay but if you actually do something mm. you will remember what you did mm. and through that you can come back to the concept mm. right so that example uh, that will always be in your head like for example if you are developing uh, let's say uh, if you want to develop uh, a, a cure for a blind person mm. or a more feasible method for a blind person to find something in the room mm. right you have to walk into their shoes and do it then mm. you will feel it and at the same time when you are doing it when you are developing something mm. you have to read about it you have to read about the physiology of the eye how mm. it is made of what are the components how do they function mm. how do you see mm. what is the physics of seeing mm. right so then automatically the kid will uh, learn all the science mm. but he or she won't feel that he is memorizing anything mm. Mm. and that activity they will remember for their life and they will actually enjoy it mm. so we have to i think go at the, maybe not for all the lessons but at least for some lessons mm. if we can start with I think that that's that's good. an important yes. step in the right direction. Thank you very much uh, Professor Tilaka Ratna, uh, the chairman of the committee for the popularization of science in Sri Lanka from the Sri Lanka Association of Advancement for Science uh, for joining us on the People's Platform and of course explaining the importance of science and uh, contributing uh, to that daunting task of popularizing science here in Sri Lanka. Thank you very much to all our viewers out there for tuning in to another episode. of the people's platform until we meet again take care and god bless <laughs>